Okay, this lesson is on paths and layers in Illustrator for uh, keeping your document organized. We're going to start off by um, explaining to you what layers are and also showing you examples of them. I think sometimes the best way to understand layers is to look at an existing example with layers and what it is that they do for a digital illustration. So if we go over here, we'll notice that this icon here pulls up our layers palette. And if you cannot find it here for whatever reason, you can always go to window and you can select layers. And now if we go to the layers palette, what we find is that we have a layer here that is called written disclosures. I'm going to go ahead and um, take this off the dock. I'm going to move it over. Okay, I like doing this so that way I can enlarge it um, and see everything that's written in here and also so that it doesn't keep pulling itself back into the palette here. Now you'll notice that we have one called written disclaimers and we have this option to turn on and off layers and layers are like stacked pieces of paper or if you were to cut out a tree out of one construction piece of paper and a sun out of another one picture all these construction pieces of paper the sun and the tree stacked on top of each other to build a scene okay all right so I'm going to turn it off just so that you can see that is this layer here okay and um, if we open up that layer notice that it's locked right now it doesn't allow us to move it okay see how I moved the grass underneath but I was trying to move um, the text it will not move because it is locked okay so I'm gonna go ahead and unlock it and here you'll notice there's this little triangle you can open that up and you can turn off that text that says copyright text and then this one that has the blurb on education okay so within a layer you can turn it on and turn it off within the layer there's these paths or sub layers and you can turn those on and turn those off and you can go even in here and start turning off individual pieces within and you can also lock them so that they're not movable okay notice I keep selecting the object beneath it because it won't allow me to select the one that's on top and you can continue to open turn on turn off lock objects um, as you need them you can also select a certain object instead of going on the artboard here and selecting it directly you can go to the layer and I can select this copyright text simply by clicking on the little circle for that particular layer. Now this may seem a little odd to you right now because we typically don't select things from the layer you would think. Uh, it just seems easier to go in and select it here on the artboard. But in reality, once you start building a lot of layers and you're trying to select something that's very itty bitty small like an eye or a certain highlight that's very difficult or kind of hidden underneath another one it might be easier for you to go and select the eye layer in the layers palette because it's clear that it's an eye as opposed to when you're trying to select the pieces and you can't quite get them all because they're so small on the canvas and you'll probably run into this issue when you are designing and you're gonna want to go into the layer and select the layer or the sub layer uh, based on that okay so here we have this is the main layer and typically we use a main layer for the major object, like say the girl or the background. You know, for the object, you use the main layers. They're at the very top of the directory structure. And you usually use sub layers in the event that you have different sub parts to that particular object. So for instance, if we open the girl, she has sub layers for all the major parts of her, such as the head, the shirt, uh, the left arm, the torso. And it's just easier that way because you may need to access the layers in such a way that allows you to easily duplicate or move things around. Now within these sub layers, you have the ability to create the paths and the paths are basically the drawings of the actual parts for an object's pieces. So say for instance, the leg, it's probably a good one. All right, if we open that up, you'll notice that we have the main leg. I'm gonna turn it off and turn it on so you can see what it is. And then we have the left shadow here and then you'll notice we have the right shadow and now these paths you don't have to create these paths uh, manually you do have to create your main layers manually and your sub layers manually to tell the program how it is that you want to organize your stuff so I'm going to be showing you how to create um, layers and sub layers just so that you get a sense of how these things are structured and what you have to create manually and not manually okay okay now we're going to be covering how to create layers, sub layers, and the paths within them, and then also how to delete them. So we're gonna go ahead and um, go to the layers palette. And here at the bottom of the layers palette, there's this little icon that says create new layers. It looks like a little page. 
I'm going to click on that and you can go up to the layer and if you double click on the text part of it you can name it so I'm going to call this trees and now should you want to change the name of it you can go ahead and double click it again and just uh, let me say make that tree now what I can do is I can create sub for sub parts like the trunk and the uh, leafy area I can create sub layers for that so if I'm in the tree layer I select on the main outer layer of this I can make a sub layer and I can create a sub layer for the leafy part I'm just going to call it leafy part and then I'm going to create a, another sub layer for the trunk. Now I don't want to click here and make a sub layer because that'll make a sub layer within that layer. Notice that it belongs to this one. I'm going to undo. I don't want to do that. I want to make a sub layer for the tree, which is the trunk, because the trunk belongs to the tree, not to the leafy part. So I'm going to select the tree and I'm going to make a sub layer. And now what you'll notice is that it's on the same level as the leafy part. They're equal in that sense. And we go trunk. And now I'm going to draw the trunk here and I'm going to draw the leafy part here. Okay so now I'm just going to go ahead and draw a tree and so in the trunk one I'm going to click on it and I'm going to get a rectangle tool. Now my tree isn't going to be beautiful but you'll get the idea. I'm going to go ahead and change the color on this to a brown and then I am going to go back and you notice it, it created a path here. I'm just going to go ahead and name that main trunk okay and then I'm going to grab a little circle and I'm going to make a circle this one's gonna be black and then I'm gonna draw another little inner circle here and that's gonna be black as well I'm gonna go ahead and change this one actually Okay, and so I'm going to name these, and there's a main trunk, and this one is going to be the little outer shadow. Notice they're just stacked objects on top of one another, and this one is going to be the hole. Okay, yes, okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and close that one. I'm going to go to the leafy part. I'm going to click on that one, and this is what you want to remember to do when you're drawing. Make sure that that the sub-layer or layer that you're wanting to draw on is actually selected. Okay. Now I'm going to click on the ellipse tool and I'm just going to go ahead and start drawing the pieces of the leafy tree. Okay. I'm just going to draw several of these. You notice that they start getting uh, the paths drawn instantly in here. Okay. So now I'm going to just select these, click on shift and select these and just change the color something more green and I can go in here and call this leafy one leafy two leafy three or in this case when things are so similar and they're kind of hard to tell apart anyways um, you may or may not want to go in here and name but in general you need to have a general organization and name most of your layers and paths and uh, sub layers okay I'm gonna go ahead and close this uh, now what we'll notice is that the tree trunk is on top of the leafy part and you usually want it the other way around. So we can go in here and actually this is part of the next lesson that you're going to be learning is that you can reorder the layer. So I'm going to go and grab this layer and I'm going to drag it to where I see the little line. Not in there because that's selecting the trunk layer. It's going to put it in there but right in between here that means it's above the trunk layer. And it reordered it and there you have it. Okay, I'm going to go back and open up this girl here and what you'll notice is that you have all these different parts inside and what you can do is that you can reorder these even after you've drawn them so in case they're not staying organized as you draw them you can always reorganize them I'm going to give you an example let's say that um, you have her hair and you have her face and you accidentally drew the hair first so it's down at the bottom of the layer order well that looks a little funny right as you start coloring it in um, because when you first start you just do everything in outlines and we're going to talk about that a little bit more when we discuss the pen tool. Eventually you're going to color everything in and when you start coloring things in you're going to start noticing that they're not exactly where you want them. So know that you can change these sub layers, uh, arrange the order and you just have to hold down and drag them and you'll notice there's this little line, oops, there's this little line here. If I do this it's going to put the hair inside the face layer. I don't want that. I want to put it above right there where you see that line indicating that it's in between the layers okay now you similarly you could do the same thing within the um, 
sublayer, you could arrange the highlights to be beneath the hair, which you don't really want to do because then they disappear. But then you can arrange them above, okay? And now what's important in terms of how many layers and sublayers and things that you name, it's important that you name your layers because it's going to help you when you start moving things around or you can't figure out where something is because it's hidden behind an object. It's going to be important that you, you name these as you go so that you can easily organize your layers. But you don't have to go in there and, and name every single highlight. If it's repeated and you have it in a folder called hair light, uh, highlights, you, you could probably get away with just naming them all the same. Or if you want to be very specific and say lighter highlight, darker highlight, that's up to you. But um, I would suggest not making too many sublayers, maybe two to three, um, like this one, this one, and maybe this one. Um, like three levels in from the main layer. Otherwise, you can start getting, your file becomes very complex and it can start getting corrupt. And we've had people where their whole layer directory structure wipes out because they have so many. They feel they have to name everything and put everything within sublayers and sublayers and sublayers and sublayers. Okay. Now, you might ask, okay, aside from keeping my document organized and being able to find the object that I'm looking at, uh, looking for fairly easily. Another reason for organizing these um, into layers or sub layers, say that you had a uh, girl like this and you wanted her to be a twin, but you didn't want to draw her all over again. Um, and you just want to change some of her features like her clothes and maybe her hair a little bit. Then what you could easily do because you have this in its own layer, this girl in her own layer, you can drag her into this new layer button and it will duplicate her. Okay, now you can't see her right now because I'm turning it off and on just so you can see because she's directly on top of something that looks just like her. But if we select from this side here, it's going to select the entire layer without having to go individually and trying to select all the pieces. It's selecting her and now I just wait for this indicator that tells me it's a move tool. That's a little black arrow here. I'm going to click and I'm going to hold down and I'm going to drag her. Now I can put her here. Now we have twins. Okay, and now in theory, I can go and change her hair a little bit. I could make hers not as wavy, or I could make hers be up in a bun. Like, I could basically take off her hair and put a different wig on her. Um, I could also change the color of her shirt and the color of her um, skirt. Okay, so what this allows us to do is having things already in one big um, layer for each object is easy to duplicate things. Okay. Sometimes you're not going to duplicate the entire thing. I'm just going to go ahead and turn off that layer. I'm going to open up the inside. Let's say, for instance, that you decided you want her to have an arm, that you don't want her arm to be resting in the back there. Um, we can look at the left arm, all right? And I can grab that entire left arm, and I can duplicate it by going here into the duplicate layer. Even though it's a sub-layer, I just go to duplicate layer. And you'll notice it makes a copy of it, okay? And now, again, we can't see it because it's directly on top of it, but if we select it here by the copy, we can grab it and move it over, okay? Now, it's facing the wrong way, but you can go into this tool. It's usually under the Rotate tool or within the Rotate tool. You can click it, and you can go to the Reflect tool, and you can... Flip it vertical uh, along this vertical axis, so it's going to reflect it, and we're going to hit OK. And now you'll notice that it turned around. Now the arm isn't going to be perfect in the exact same shape that you want it to, but the good thing is, is that you'll be able to at least have a starting point so you don't have to redraw it from scratch, and you can just shape it and arrange it and put it where you want to. You're going to have to, of course, change these highlights so they're not uh, looking weird and maybe add a little highlight to the top of her shoulder or whatever, but you get the idea. Okay, this concludes our lesson. If you have any questions, 808-343-9565 or ILED at hawaii.edu.